right, so we have our springs ready to go back in. I uh, went ahead and jammed the old Mustang II rubber bushings in the springs. Now they're a half inch hole with a 9 16 shaft shoved in them, but they work. They're a little stiff. Um, not much more stiff than the polyurethane bushings from Calvert. So I think I'm going to save the 20 bucks of uh, buying those polyurethane bushings from Speedway to replace these. And we're going to start another project with my mini lathe. Get some material and make my own. So let's get these things back up in here. We'll have to push the axle forward on the jack stand so it lines up right. But we'll have an axle. Maybe we'll get to drive it. Alright, so we're having a little issue with getting the spring lined up with the I mean, the bolt and the spring lined up with the hole on the axle perch. The side appears to be in. And it's starting to look like the axle is too wide. But, man, I measured that a few times. Um, and originally I had uh, this all kind of loosely bolted together before I put... Uh, the spring shackle hangers up and they were like splayed out really wide the uh, hanger was bumping into my rusty fenders as I was trying to jack the axle up I'm like oh god it's not gonna fit but I think I think we can get it it's really close right now I think I'm going to use this ratchet strap to try and pull the axle over somehow. I don't know what I can hook to. Maybe up by that bump stop. Pull that over and see if it'll drop down into that spring. See how it goes. Alright, did this contraption with the ratchet strap. And I thought I heard it bump in. Oh, I can't see it with my own eyes. So you guys get to see it. It appears to be in there. Let's see if I can feel it. Can't. I get my finger in there. I think it's in. <sighs> All right, let's get some of this stuff tightened down. All right, we're getting the axle up in here. Finally got the right size springs. Finding a couple issues. For one thing, the shocks are like at full extension right now, um, and we're just about compressing that rubber right there, finally. The car is lifted up by the axle, we're off of the uh, bottle jacks there, so we didn't compress the springs much at all. Um, I don't know. These Calvert shock mounts are just not right. I mean, the shock is hitting the axle, I think, or just close enough. Boy, I'm really, really tight right there. It's not touching. The other issue is the drive shaft. It's just too long I can't quite get get it up on there 
And I think it's going to hit the V-band clamp there. Just tickle it. So, I don't know. It's not worth making a drive shaft that'll fit between here and the original Pinto transmission. So, we're not going to be able to test run this. We gotta come up with something for the shocks. I don't know. I think you can buy an extension or make an extension. Probably do that. All right, <clears throat> working through this Pinto shock problem. Had to tape measure out. Um, from what the research I've been finding online, YouTube and stuff for drag racing shocks, like double adjustable QA1 style, they all recommend um, having the shock at its mid-travel at ride height while you're sitting in it. Um, so I measured from full extension to full compression, divided that in half, it was about two and a half. Um, wrote that on there. I could see the dirt mark from where it used to ride at for stock height with the old axle. Kind of marked that with dotted lines there. Um, so what's happening is with this in the car and the Caltrax installed uh, with the ride height just jacking up the axle till the car lifts off the stand um, the Caltrax mount is like just barely pushing on this piece of rubber um, so that's not good uh, you, you would have no no rebound beyond that so I'm thinking I need about three and a half to four inches of an extension here to get that right. Um, so I'm gonna do a little McMaster car shopping and see what I can do. I found another issue with the Pinto design with these mounts that go up under the body. This one is off the driver's side. And from like the outer edge of the frame rail, kind of frame rail in quotations, uh, it's about ten and a half inches to this mounting point. And on the passenger side, which that one, this one's on the rear side of the axle. That one's on the front side of the axle. Um, that's like eight and a half inches. And it seems to be seems to be further forward and or should i say further away from the axle than this one is because it it just doesn't line up with the the mounting tab that cal calvert supplies so i think i can get away with this one mounting onto the calvert normally once i extend it but the other one i'm gonna have to bend Kind of a tab sticking off of it. Yeah, it, I don't know. Obviously, these are not drag racing shocks. They're just plain old stock shocks. And the more I look at it, the more I, I can't put drag racing shocks in that location. It would just not be, it would not be geomet geometrically correct. Um, and you lose your dampening with the shocks at an angle. And you got two different angles on each side. It would just be a nightmare. So I will have to come up with a better system. But I think that's going to be with the next axle. Whatever axle I put in here is going to have shock mounts built into it. 
And we're going to find a new place in the body to mount the axle or the uh, shock absorbers, preferably straight up and down. And I don't know. Right now, we just need to make it work.